Hello. Okay, so uh, welcome back to the second talk. So Professor Burgos Gill will speak about Arakolov theory, equidistribution and dynamics. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So yesterday we saw uh, the naive height on uh, starting with uh, rational numbers and ending in projective spaces. And we see a small application about, uh, let's say torsion points in, in the projective space. And today I want to describe a much more general way of defining heights that will be applied in a much uh, wider situation. Then the idea is that in some sense arithmetic, we can think that arithmetic is like geometry in a family where the base is a number field. So this idea goes back uh, to André Bail uh, for the case of dimension one, when we are looking at curves, then Arakelov in dimension two, and then Gillette and Soule generalized to higher dimension. And then I want to describe a little bit what is the basic principles, but I will not go in precise details because we will not need in exactly this, this way. So we'll make some small modifications. So let's assume that they start with X, a variety, a smooth variety, and projective, let's say, variety over Q. And I want to be able to define heights. I know that the height should be the analog of the degree. And what I will do is, in some sense, spread this variety over the integers. So what I need is the following. I start with a spec of the integers. Then I look at a model, x twiddle. This will be a model of x. This means that I just look at a variety over the integers whose uh, fiber, uh, whose generic fiber is exactly the original one. So in fact, getting models is very easy. You just take any uh, system of equations that determines x in a projective space, then you clear the denominators, and then you get a system of equations with integral coefficients, so you have a model. What is difficult is to get good models. I mean, to get a model is easy, but to get a good model is difficult because, for instance, we don't have resolution of singularities over the integers. So then maybe you will need to use the Young's alterations and get a model of some covering or something like that, but getting good models is difficult. Getting a model is easy, but getting good models is difficult. So then this model, for instance, over a prime P will have a smooth fiber. So this will be a point where my model has good reduction. There will be another point where, for instance, my model will have a, a bad reduction like this, or there can be other points where uh, the fiber is even uh, disconnected. Now, the problem is that in order to do geometry and to define degrees, we need a compact variety, a projective variety. And here, uh, the varieties projective uh, fiber-wise, but the base is not projective. The base is an affine scheme. Now, uh, we have seen the other day that, uh, yesterday, that if I think of the closest points of a spec set as uh, valuations, as uh, absolute values, as places of, of Q, then if I add the Archimedean place, then I get the product formula. Then the product formula, as we saw yesterday, is very much uh, uh, <clears throat> analogous to uh, the formula transmitted in a complete curve. If I sum the order of the zeros and poles of the, of the function will be zero. So if we add here the, the <clears throat> Archimedean absolute value, then now the base it behaves like a projective curve. And now I have to complete this diagram. I have to add the fiber over this point. Okay, the fiber over this point. Let's say that I take just the variety X uh, complexified. And now uh, I need, uh, the problem is that we don't have an algebraic model over infinity. So in, if we have a non-Archimedean uh, absolute value, then the set of elements of norm smaller than one is a ring, and then we can start playing with models. If I am with an Archimedean absolute value, there is no way I can make a ring out of this absolute value and there is no models. So I have to invent some way to glue together these two things. Let's say that I just uh, saw them using 
this one, and I look for a method to glue these two things together. Okay, this was a little bit, there. so I copied this, this picture from Sule, uh, all that he was giving when I was doing the, the PSD. And the, <clears throat> so now the, the idea is that an object in this, in this situation will always be a pair. An object in the scheme over the integers and an analytic object on the, uh, on the, the spatial finder. Okay. So now to this situation, uh, Gillette and Soule, they uh, <coughs> associate a arithmetic show ring. At least in the case when the model X is regular. So we have C H a P of X from P equal to zero up to, so let's say that X has dimension, the dimension of X is equal to D. So the dimension of the model will be D plus one. So then this goes up to D plus one. Then there is an intersection product, which means that I can go from CH P of X tensor CH Q of X to CH P plus Q of X, but this only with rational coefficients. So I cannot make, for now, I cannot make the, the intersection product over the integrals. I need rational coefficients. And then there is also a degree, a degree map that goes, let's say, degree with a hat. So the trick in uh, this Arakelo geometry is to put a hat on everything that goes from so hat d plus one, the top dimensional one of the model, to the real numbers. So now the degree is not an integer, it's a real number. So this is the intersection theoretical part, but also we can look at vector bundles. And now what will be a vector bundle in this setting? So a vector bundle in this setting will be a locally free shift on the model, let's say E plus, so now I have to say what is the, the part at infinity. So I have to add an Hermitian metric an Hermitian metric on E that will be just the complex vector bundle over the complex fiber. Okay, so the, the data I have to add at infinity is just the data of an Hermitian. Later we will see why an Hermitian metric is an interesting object. Then uh, to any, let's write E bar, this will be, or E bar will be this pair E with the Hermitian metric. To this guy, I can associate C I hat, the arithmetic chain classes, uh, that uh, they will live in so the C I hat of my vector bundle will live in C H I of X. Okay, so, and <clears throat> one has all the machinery, many results in, in geometry can be translated using this. Term. Okay, now imagine that we have now this machine and we want to define heights. Well, in the same way as in geometry, to define degree, I need just to choose an ample line bundle, here I will do the same. I will choose an ample line bundle. But what is a line bundle here? A line bundle will be a locally free shift on the model plus a metric on X. So I will need a L, a line bundle on X plus a Hermitian metric. on LC. And now <clears throat> I can 
take the first 10 class of this uh, line bundle. And since I have an intersection product, I can, for instance, compute the P power of this guy. And if I have Y a sub variety of X of dimension, let's say P plus one, then I take the P plus one product and one can intersect with the sub variety Y and take the arithmetic degree of this object. And this will be uh, very much related to the height. So this object will be uh, an out of height. So it's not exactly the height. I will have to normalize. I will have to, so the, this is, let's say, well, this will be related to the height. Later, we will give a more precise definition. So in this way, we can use the analogy between geometry and, and arithmetic, and we can give a very general definition of uh, heights, because now for every line bundle on the model and every metric, I can define a height. And then I can choose the right line bundle for the problem I am working with. No? For instance, if I want a height that has some modular interpretation, I can use as my line bundle a line bundle of modular forms. As a metric, I can use the Peterson metric, and then I will get a nice uh, values for this height. Okay, but here we have uh, some problems. Yeah. So the point is that. Uh, so here, uh, since I want to have a number, what I need is a variety of dimension p plus one, and then I will multiply by something of co-dimension p plus one to get a number. Okay. Well, the point is that, uh, yeah. Well, I was being a little bit, uh, the problem is the sub variety will not give an element in this show group. So the, these two groups uh, are varieties and some object at infinity. And I am neglecting this object at infinity. So the point is that uh, you can think that this guy uh, gives you a cycle of codimension uh, D minus P, but is not exactly the case. So the problem is that in the, the original definition of two groups, the sub varieties are not there. So you need sub varieties plus some extra, but then you can define the height subtracting this extra term. So, but don't worry a little too much about this because we will change and go to a simpler version. Okay, okay so what I'm saying is that uh, this picture, we have uh, some uh, problems to apply in the CIT that we want. The first problem is that in order to have the whole machinery of intersection products, I need the model to be regular. And in general, I don't have resolution singularities. So I don't know if I can get a regular model. So maybe asking to have the whole intersection product is a little bit too much. On the other hand, uh, in order to define heights, I only want to multiply by the first class of a line bundle. But the first class of a line bundle typically is a Cartier divisor. And multiplying by Cartier divisor is easy. I don't need regularity to multiply by Cartier divisor. So maybe this is a little bit too much machinery just to define heights. The second problem is that uh, many interesting heights does not come from a model. So being forced to use a model, uh, in some sense, uh, can be a, a problem. So we want to be free of uh, the use of a model. First, because we don't know if we will be able to find a good model. And second, because not everything that we want to, to use will come from a model. So we want to make a small modification of this, of this uh, thing. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing I want to do is to see that, in some sense, the information contained in a model can be encoded in a metric. This is why here we're saying, okay, what will be a vector bundle? A vector bundle will be a vector bundle on the model, and then on the fiber that I don't know what does it mean to get a model, I just put a metric. 
what I want to explain now is that uh, models and metrics are not that different. So if I have a model, I can uh, produce a metric out of it. Now, let's go, and this will be 2, 2, from models to metrics. Okay. And this is just a poorly local uh, construction. So let's now assume that I have K, a field which is complete with respect to a non Archimedean uh, absolute value. I have my absolute value B, and I look at a field that is complete with this absolute value. So the, the example you should have in mind is, for instance, QP. Then I will look at O of K. This will be the elements X in K such that the absolute value of X is small or equal than one. This is automatically a subring if the absolute value is non Archimedean. And then I will have M of K. This is the maximal ideal, is the X inside K, such that the absolute value of X is strictly smaller than one. Okay, now <clears throat> let's assume that I have X a variety over uh, K. Then a model. is, uh, let's say, it's a projective variety. A projective variety over K. Then a model is a flat projective scheme for the X over spec of O of K plus an isomorphism between X tensor over OK with K with X, okay? And in some, uh, the isomorphism is, is X, is part of the data. So this will be a model over OK of X. Now, if I have L align bundle on X, a model, A model of L is a triple. Let's say is L, E, and phi, uh, where E is an integer that is bigger equal than one. L is a line bundle. Line bundle on the model X, and this phi is an isomorphism of the line bundle L tensor with K over OK and my original bundle L, but not the original bundle L, the uh, <coughs> tensor product of L E times. No, sometimes we don't, we are not able to find a model of L. We need to get a power of the line bundle and then get a model. Okay, it's clear what a model of a line bundle is. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I will follow the tradition started by my predecessor, and I will write this either as L tensor E or as E times L. So I will use the additive and the multiplicative notation uh, in both ways, since this tradition has already been started. Okay, now I want to see how from this data, so I start with my line bundle on X, and I have now a model of this line bundle over some model of the variety. I want to see how I can associate a metric on X. So I want 
to associate to x and l, I can give a metric on l. Okay. What does it mean to give a metric? So I have to, whenever I have s, a section of my line bundle l, a rational section, does not need to be a global section. And I have a point x, a point of x, that x does not belong to the support of the divisor of the section. So the section does not have a pole nor a zero on x. I have to tell you what is the norm of the section at the point x. Okay, I have to define the norm associated to this model. And this norm is given by, let me look at the exact definition. Is just equal to the infimum of all the numbers of the form if root of a to the minus one whenever a is an element of k different from zero and the section a times s of e extends to a section of the whole L over the closure of the point X. Okay. Is clear this definition? So the point is that I want to know what is the value, the norm of the section at the point X. Then I look at the curve which is just the closure of the point X, then I have my line bundle L and the section S. Now the section S is well defined at the point X because X is not a zero or a pole. But when I want to go to the closure, I want to go to the closest point, it might happen that my section acquires a zero or a pole at the closest point of the closure of X. And then I can start multiplying by elements of K, for instance, if my section has a pole, I will have to multiply by elements of K that vanishes at the closest point in order to make this, uh, this value uh, to extend. Or if it has zeros, I can multiply by things with poles. And then I look at what is the minimal element I need to make the section extend, and then this will be my metric. Okay? And one can see that this really produces a metric on the line bundle. So every <clears throat> Most of the information on the model is codified with this. With this uh, and in fact, we can see that we don't lose information because if X is fixed, then the map from L, so from models of the line bundle to metrics, and let's say models up to isomorphism, this is injected. So we don't lose information when we uh, go to the metric. Of course, if we change the model of the variety, we can, so if I have a model of the line bundle, I take a different model of the variety and I take the pullback of the model, I will get the same metric. So if I change the model, then I will change the metric. But uh, if I fix the model of the variety, then the metric associated to a line bundle really characterizes the line bundle. But now with metrics, I have much more flexibility. So metrics uh, allow me to, to make uh, <coughs> work much better. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because in some uh, situations uh, you start with a line bundle on X, and you don't, you are not able to find a, a good model. And typically, what you find are good models of the power of. So this will be <clears throat> okay. Now, and you see, this is the reason why in this picture, when, for instance, we want to say, what does it mean to have a, big, a line bundle over the whole thing? Okay, here I can choose a model here. Here I don't know how to choose a model. Okay, I put a metric. Because a metric, I know how to put a metric on this complex part. And I see that a metric, in some sense, contains the information of a model when the model is. If there is no model, then uh, OK. 
Gut. Bisschen? Nein? What? Well, uh, the point is that uh, an isomorphism will be, yeah. So the point is that you can change the E. So an isomorphism will be that you have, this is isomorphic to L prime, E prime, and phi prime. This means that I have an uh, isomorphism between L tensor E prime is isomorphic to L tensor uh, E. And now I have the isomorphism with L tensor E E prime, E plus E prime, uh, E times E prime. And I want this to commute. So this will be an isomorphism of models. Where? Oh, yes, this is L prime. So this is an isomorphism of models. Is this clear? Where this will be the isomorphism phi to the power a e prime, and this will be phi to the power uh, e. e prime to the power e, and maybe this is. Yeah? So this will be an isomorphism of models. <coughs> yes? Well, this is just to, for this example. So case fix. So I want to say that a model in a particular place corresponds to a metric in this place. Now I will look at my family and then I will play this role on every place. So I will spread things. Exactly. This is like uh, I am over P, I look at QP and then on QP I can replace the model by a metric on QP. But now I go to another prime and then I will need another metric and I will need a metric on each prime. So I will be, need an infinite number of metrics. What, what, what? Yes, so the point is that uh, here I only, I, I only asking that it extends. And this is why I'm taking here the infimum. Okay, and then the infimum is achieved when it extends and does not vanish. Okay. And I think also that here in taking this infimum, I, the, so the infimum is over all A's and all E's. So not just uh, because uh, it sometimes uh, I need to go to a power of L to get a nice section to go. So it's not the infimum over A. So for a particular A, maybe there is no A such that it extends and it does not vanish. So I will go to need to go to some power to, to be able to find the infimum. Okay. Okay, so now I go back to the case where I have my x over q and have a line bundle over q. Then for every place, b belonging to m uh, of q, I can construct the analytic space over the place uh, B, that will be X of C if B is the Archimedean place, just the usual uh, <coughs> complex variety, or the Berkovic analytic space if B is non okay. So it's not strictly necessary to work with these Berkovic spaces. But it is very convenient. So this Berkovich space, this is a non-Archimedean analytic space that has very nice topological properties. So for instance, since I am assuming that X is projective, so this will be, so this space is Hausdorff, is, uh, is locally compact. And in fact, it is compact. 
and I think it's even locally contractible. So it's a very nice space to work with and for instance, to talk about continuous functions and to talk about measures and so on. So uh, it was very convenient to, to associate uh, to every place this analytic space. Now, okay. yes, I was assuming X projective from the, so even if I don't say so, let's assume that all varieties are projective because I want to define height, so I will need this to be the projective. So. But it's not needed. So if X is not projective, then I can also have a analytic space, but it will not be compact in this case. Yes, yes, the notion is perfectly clear. I mean, there is a, a functor that to algebraic varieties gives you analytic spaces and it's even much more uh, general. So you can construct analytic spaces for more general things. So, uh, I am just stating this for projective cases, just for simplicity, but the analytic space to any, uh, to any algebraic variety over a field that is complete, you can uh, associate a Berkowitz space. Okay, again, what will be this? Yes. Why can you talk louder? Yes, this is one way to do it. But for instance, if you start with the with the affine line, uh, I can give you a description of the whole analytic affine line. So the point is that uh, if you you can construct the affine line just as balls and making the balls bigger and bigger and bigger, or you can just describe the affine line directly as semi norms on the on the ring of polynomials. So there is a description for affine varieties. There is a direct description. You don't need to to go these balls. Okay, now, <clears throat> okay. so now uh, we are in this situation and we want to define an adelic metric, a continuous adelic metric. Continuous adelic metric on L is a family is a family of norms B inside MQ. So I need to describe a metric for each place of Q of continuous metrics. on L B over X and of B. So I have to choose a metric for every place. Now, the problem is that if I choose uh, a metric for every place, things can be very wild. I mean, I can start putting completely unrelated metrics and there will be no way to uh, try to get something coherent. So I need some coherence here such that there exists a model uh, x of x over u inside a spec of c. So instead of having a model over the whole spec of c, I only need a model over an open set of uh, spec of c and a model L of L over is uh, I, such that for all uh, Bs inside U, the Beadic norm is induced by the model. Okay. 
So the point is that I have a small open and a model over the small open where all the metrics are given by the model. But then on the complement, which will be just a finite number of fibers, I can choose whatever I want. I can put an arbitrary. Okay. In some sense, this solves a lot of problems because if I have, a, I start with a regular variety, for instance, and I look at a model, I know that my variety is generically smooth. So I know that there is an open subset of spec set where the model will be regular and smooth. So I can use this part where everything is fine to use the model metric. And then in the other fibers, in the bad fibers, in the singular fibers, I have the freedom to put whatever metric I want. So I don't need to, to worry very much about the model. But this condition will be, will be useful. For instance, let me see if I, uh, if I have an adelic metric, I can now define a height of a point. So now if I have a, a L bar, this will be just this L and this family of metrics and I have a point X that belongs to XQ, a rational point. I want to write down the height of X and then the height of X can be defined as the sum. So I do just the sum for all places of the logarithm of the norm of a section, so I choose S a section, such that X is not in the device of S, can be regular or rational, and then I take this, this sum. Now, <clears throat> this sum, on the one hand, this is a finite, And this sum is finite thanks exactly to this coherent condition that I have said here. Because so on this sum, I don't have control on what happens in a finite number of fibers, the fibers that do not come from the model. But then on the model, what I know is that this section, if I see this as a section of a line bundle on the model, it will have a divisor. This divisor will have an horizontal component that does not contain the whole uh, closure of X and some vertical components. Now, the intersection of the closure of X with this divisor will be just a finite number of points. Hence, there will be only a finite number of, of, uh, of uh, places where this metric will be different from one. So the logarithm of one is zero. So there will be only a finite number of places where this sum uh, exists. So this sum is finite and it's finite thanks exactly to this coherent condition. So if I don't put this coherent condition, then this finite, this sum can be finite. This is why I need this coherent condition. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> the point is that I have this section. Then in the model, this section will be just yeah, some horizontal parts and some vertical parts. Now, X is a point on the uh, generic fiber. When I take the closure of X, this will be a curve. This will be a dimension one, and it's not contained in the divisor of X on the divisor of S. Now, if you have a curve that is not contained in a divisor, then the intersection of the curve and the divisor can only be a finite number of points. So you will get uh, your curve like this, then they will be touched here, they will touch here, here, and maybe some other parts. I don't know. The point is that on this fiber, since the section already extends and does not vanish, the norm is one because I don't need to multiply by anything to get the section next. The only points where the section, where the norm will be non one are exactly these intersection points. But this intersection points is a finite number of intersection points. So it's only a finite number of places where this norm can be different from one. And hence, there is only a finite number of places where the logarithm of the norm can be different from zero. So this sum is finite and is well defined. But you start with a fixed dimension, uh, variety of dimension D. But 
But here you start with a point X. So the closure of the point X will be occur inside this variety. And the model is flat, which means that all the fibers have the same dimension. Any question? Well, this is the second part. This may depend on the section S, but if I change the section by a function, the probe formula tells me that I get the same value. So it's the probe formula that tells me that I, this does not depend on the section S. This is where this plays. The, the probe formula always plays a role in this, in this. Okay, so, and now I have a very general uh, frame. So to every continuous adelic metric, I can define a height. Uh, I need some, some more definitions. No, 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 it's a closed point. So I am looking at a closed point on X, so a, a, a point of dimension zero on the generic fiber. Yes, uh, but uh, a point of, not a, the point of a sub variety, no, no, a point. No, it's a closed point of the generic fiber. So it's not close in, so it's the point, it's the generic point of a curve in the model. So the point is that you have the generic fiber is a variety of dimension D over Q. The model is a variety of absolute dimension D plus one, or if you want is relative dimension D over spec set. And then a closed point on the generic fiber is the, the generic point of a curve in the model. Okay. Now I need some two definitions. So a continuous adelic metric is called smooth if satisfies two things. The first condition is that U is all spec of set, so that the model is a global model. And the second condition is that over uh, the point at infinity, the metric is a smooth. Okay, so what I want is that over every non-Archimedean place, I have a model, and in the Archimedean place, I have a smooth. Okay, so in some sense, this is uh, so a line bundle has a smooth metric if it is the kind of line bundles considered by Gilles Soule. So if you go to the theory of Gilles Soule, the line bundles in this theory are exactly the smooth ones here. Okay. And another definition is that a continuous adelic metric is called yeah, so a smooth metric is called semi-positive. Semi-positive if it satisfies two condition. The first condition is that the model L is relatively enough. And the second condition is that the C1 of L with the norm at infinity. So this is a smooth metric on a line bundle on the complex, on the complex manifold. Then I can compute the first chain form, which is a one one form. Then I want that this is a positive one one form. Okay. Yes. No, 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 no. So the model, you have a variety over Q, and then you change the scalars to C, and this is it. So there is nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is to choose the metric. But the line bundle over C is fixed by the line bundle over Q. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this will be this thing. And now, semi-positive. Okay. Well, now uh, the point why I am doing this is because uh, now I have explained how to extend the height of points to any continuous adelic metric. 
The point is that I want also to define heights of super items. And if I take an arbitrary continuous metric, it's not true that I can define the height of super items. I have to restrict, I need to use some positivity results to be able to extend to super items. This is why I, I'm making this definition. And now the final object I am interested in. is the admissible adelic matrix. A continuous adelic metric is called admissible if there exists a sequence so let's say that uh, i have a discontinuous ideal metric this will be just uh, this family of b for every b and then this will be called admissible if there exists a sequence the end of a smooth semi positive matrix such that the first condition is that there exists an U open of a spec set, and for every B inside this U, the metric BN is equal to the original. So I want to have, uh, so the, in the open, where my metric is given by a model, I want that the approximants have to be uh, fixed. Maybe I have the right to shrink a little bit to the, the U, but I want that at least in an open set, the uh, sequence is stationary. And now the second condition is that for every other place, for every B inside M of Q, the function log, of the norm bn divided by norm of b. So you see this quotient is a well-defined function because whatever section I put on top and on bottom, the quotient will be the same. Because if I multiply a section by a function, I get the same function on both sides. So this is a well-defined function. And if the metrics are both are all continuous, this is a well-defined continuous function. So then I want that this converges uniformly to zero. Okay. So uh, an admissible adelic metric is just a continuous metric that can be well approximated by semi-positive smooth metrics. Okay, is this clear? Now, the basic result which is in some sense the, the reason for these definitions theorem by Shou Sang. If I have a Yeah, so maybe it's uh, time for an example before this theorem.
example. I start with x equal to p1 over q. And then I have coordinates x, y. So x, y will be my, uh, <coughs> my homogeneous coordinates. Then I can look at of 1, which is the, the standard line bundle. And I know that the sections of of 1 are given just by linear, linear forms. No, a x plus b y. So these are all possible global sections of O of 1. And for instance, the section x, s of x, is a section with a zero at the point 0, 1 and no pole. Now I can look at a model, and in this case it's very easy because I can take as a model x just p1 over the integers. So p1 over the integers gives me uh, now, <clears throat> and I have of 1 over this p1 set. Now I want to construct what is the associated metric. So what is the metric? on different places associated to this model. Okay, so now fix a prime P, P inside a spec of set, minus the generic point. And then I want to see what is the associated metric. Okay. So now I take a point alpha. A point alpha will have coordinates x0, x1, uh, x0, oh, yeah, x0, y0. And then since it is a rational point, let's say I take a rational point, I will be able to write this as some yeah, p to the r a b or a p to the r b, where a <coughs> r is bigger or equal than zero, and a and b are co-primes, and uh, without, and also a p equal to b p equal to one. So I can write the number like this, okay? And now I want to compute the norm of my section s x at this point alpha. What is the periodic norm of this section? Okay. Now I can make a picture here. So here I have a spec set. Here will be the point P. Then this is my P1 set. This is the point zero. This is the point zero one that gives me a horizontal point. And then I have the point alpha. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this point alpha. What is the closure of the point alpha in the model? Now I have to look at what happens over P. I am only interested at what happens over P. And if I am in this case, and R is bigger than zero, then, uh, on the fiber P, this goes to zero. And then I have that alpha. So if R is bigger than zero, let's say, then alpha will do something like this. And here, the order of contact is, uh, is exactly R. Okay? So I am um, R equal to one, case one. So this is the case, let's say this is the case one, and this is the case two. By contrast, if I am in the case two, then my curve will do whatever. Maybe it goes to infinity, or maybe it just wanders around, but it will not touch the device of X at this point, okay? Now, 
if I am in this case, what I need to do to make my section extend? Nothing, it already extends as a non zero section. So the in case in case two or in case one and r equal to zero, then the norm of the section is just one. But what happens if I am in the In the case one and R a, a bigger than zero. Okay. Now, what I know is that the section S, okay, the section S X is a global section. So it always extends. The point is that it has a zero at this point. So I am allowed to multiply by multiples of P and it will still be uh, extended. So I can multiply, so I can look at P to the minus R multiplied by SX, it still extends. Uh, okay, because this section will extend to this guy plus some vertical part, but the vertical part will cancel with the order of vanishing of this intersection. So now, if I look at the definition of the metric, this implies that the norm of uh, S, the norm of S alpha, Sx at the point alpha, will be just, so I have to take the, well, E is one, and then I have to take the inverse of the norm of this guy, so it will be the absolute value over P of P to the minus R, but then I have to take the inverse, and so, what I get is just uh, the norm of this guy is P to the R. Okay, so I get P to the minus R. Okay. Which, <coughs> okay, now I want to give a formula. So what I have is that the section of S alpha of the point Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, SX. Now, what happens? So, in this case, uh, this value, this P to the minus R, observe that this is exactly the norm of X in this case. So, I have obtained that it will be the norm of X, E when the norm of xp is smaller than the norm of y. Because in this case, the norm of y is one, the periodic norm of y, while the norm of a is smaller than one. While I get one when the norm of xp is bigger or equal than the norm of y. So then this can be written as the norm of X divided by the max of the absolute value of X plus A and the absolute value of Y. So the, this is X and this is Y. Oh, sorry, yes. So not, 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 sorry, sorry. Yes, the X and Y are the sections. The X not and Y not are the particular values at this point. Exactly. So we get that the canonical model give us this canonical metric. Okay. Now let's see about uh, heights. So now I have the, the norms on all uh, non Archimedean places, but I still have the right to choose the norm on the Archimedean places. <coughs> over the Archimedean place. 
Now, over the Archimedean place, I can make several choices. For instance, I can decide that the norm of x at the point x0, y0, uh, infinity, is equal to, well, I can just decide to use the same formula. So this is a perfectly valid continuous metric. So I can take the absolute value of x0 divided by the absolute value by the maximum of the absolute value of x naught and the absolute value of y. Or I can choose to get the Fubini's 2D metric, which is also a very nice metric in the projective space. So I can take the this right here. Or I can choose to take the uh, L1 norm. So x0 divided by the absolute value of x0 plus the absolute value of y0. So, all of these are perfectly valid continuous metrics on, uh, on P1 over C. And now we can see that if I look at this, I will get the canonical height. So the height of the point A, B, where A and B are co-prime, will be given by the log of the max of the absolute value of A and the absolute value of B when A and B are integers and co-prime. In this case, I will get that the height of the point AB will be given by the log of the square root of the absolute value of A to the square plus the absolute value of B to the square. And in this case, I will get that the height of A, the point A comma B is given by the log of the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. So you see that all the three possible heights that I wrote the, the first die as possible choices of a height just correspond to different choices of uh, metrics at infinity in this case. So we have achieved a lot of flexibility and now we can really define many different kinds of, of uh, <coughs> heights using metrics. Okay, maybe I stop here, some questions. Questions? Because here I am, I am looking at the height of points. And then when I have just one section, then there is only a finite number of points where the metric will be different from one. Oats. So this is a very interesting question. The point is that uh, here you can do two things. So uh, uh, the base uh, is the, in this case, is the spectrum of a number field, but exactly the same you can do with a function field. And then you, has, you have the function field case and it is parallel and many theorems move from one side to the other. Now, the point is that in arithmetic, we only have one dimensional fields. So there is no higher dimensional vector uh, values. On the other hand, if we write down the function field case, many of these cases are just given by the degree of a line bundle on the model. And then uh, these degrees, these global degrees, define it whatever the base is, uh, has any dimension. So the point is that the higher, the higher dimensional base normally comes with a geometric, uh, geometry attached, and then you can work using the geometry. While in arithmetic, you only care about the case of dimension one fields. I don't know if this solves the, the question. What, my notion of what? Yeah, 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 so you see a smooth metric, in some sense, uh, I will have to call it model smooth metric. So a smooth means that it is a smooth on the Archimedean fiber, and it is a model on all the non-Archimedean fibers. So it really comes from a model on all non-Archimedean fibers. And this is a strong uh, thing. And then the point is that uh, now we'll go to continuous metrics, 
which means that you can take any continuous function on some finite number of places. And of course, these continuous places will never come from a, from a model. The point is that these Berkovich spaces, they have a, a polyhedral structure. And then the, normally the matrix that comes from model will be reflected in the fact that they will be piecewise linear on the model. And then in some sense here, we are working uh, in the Archimedean and the non-Archimedean place in different ways. So now we will be looking at continuous metrics, so con like continuous functions. And now we know that any continuous function can be approximated uniformly either by smooth functions or by piecewise linear functions. And the point is that on the Archimedean case, the smooth ones are the, the better to use because we have all the analysis at our disposal. We can talk about differential forms and integrating differential forms and so on. While in the model case, it's better to use a model things because then we have all the intersection theory on the model at our disposal. And I can, we can work with this, this model. This is why we choose model metrics in the non-Archimedean case and a smooth metrics in the Archimedean case. And then we take a, a limit process. And now, of course, the, the problem will be to prove that whatever quantity is of interest, if I compute it in the smooth case and I have an approximant, then this gives me some limit on the non-smooth case. But the idea is that if you have a model, so model will be the, let's say the, the analog of smooth in the non-Archimedean at least in this first approximation. Other questions? Yes? Yes, 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 as I was saying. So the point is that having a model is very easy because you take your predictive variety, it has some equations, and then you just clear denominators. And this will give you a model. Now, this model is horrible. It will be highly, so you will have a lot of fibers that are singular, and it will have many, a lot, many, maybe many components and things like that. But then what you do is the following. If your original variety was regular, for instance, you start with a smooth variety over Q, you know that this model will be generically smooth, which means that uh, you have an open set of spec U where the model is regular and smooth. Well, now you have your U and your nice model. So you see uh, the fact that you restrict to some u, then it makes the life very easy. You always have a, so if you are able to string u, you will always have good models in u. And then the problematic points, the, the bad fibers is always a finite number of bad fibers. Okay, in the bad fibers, instead of using the model, you use a metric, which gives you the flexibility you need to work with the, the bad fibers. More questions? Thank you.